So again, I'm just going to come back to the slides for anybody who joined for what you need today. Hopefully, you were able to attend last week's workshop and you were able to successfully install Python and Sublime. If for any reason you weren't able to, or if at some point during the workshop today something goes wrong for you, I put a link into chat that is a temporary workspace where you can use Python and follow along for class. It won't save your work, but it will allow you to follow along until we get to the end of the workshop and maybe we'll have some time to troubleshoot the errors that you're seeing. I see somebody has included a capture of the error they're seeing. Hang on. Okay, and what happens if you click on the, I can get a new binder for this repo by clicking here and that blue here text. Um, thank you so much for including the screenshot of your error again right now. Folks, we're looking at people who are trying to get to the temporary workspace for today's workshop. We're looking at an error that someone found, um, binder inaccessible. If you got this error, it might be possible that you can click on the blue here link. Um, if it doesn't work for you during the workshop, it's also possible that there's too many of us logged in. Um, it should work after class. Uh, I can also take a look at it then. Again, oh, if you have Python and Sublime installed, you won't need the temporary workspace. So you can go ahead and do everything. You've done your homework, good job. Okay, so we'll just come back around to again today, if you're joining us, hopefully you were able to attend last week and you successfully installed Python and Sublime. If not, I'm going to put again into chat a link to a temporary workspace. It may be that it won't work out for you during the workshop if too many of us are on it. Um, but the idea is that you can use Python there and you should be able to experiment with what we did today in the workshop and follow along. Um, because we're coming up on 605, I know we'll get additional participants walking in a little bit late. Um, but I want to remind folks, if you want to join the Teams channel, we have um, a link in chat, but also I will review that towards the end of the workshop. Otherwise, um, we're going to use the same practice that we used last time. I know folks are tired. It's the end of the day. <clears throat> I don't expect you to participate uh, via video, but if you can please locate your Zoom reactions, should be uh, in the reaction panel at the bottom of your Zoom. If you can give me a green check, if you were able to get Sublime and Python successfully installed, I just wanna get a sort of head count for if that was able to work for people. Good, I'm seeing some green checks and thumbs up. You can also give me a red X if it didn't work out for you, but that gives me a sense of who's gonna be able to follow along today. Great. Lots of green checks. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too, too miserable an experience to get that working. Um, glad to hear it also in chat. It works after clicking here, great. So again, if at any point during the workshop your um, Python starts to not work, um, we're gonna be doing a few things where we download a library or do some complicated functions. If for any reason that doesn't work, you can use this link to the temporary IDE. It won't save your work, but it will allow you to finish the workshop tonight and go along with what we're doing. Okay, without further ado, it is 6.05, so we're gonna get started to make sure we can cover everything today. Um, the first thing we're gonna talk about is what we're covering today. So last week, um, let me move some windows around so that I can see everything. Last week, we learned about the command line. Um, we talked about how you can use it to navigate around on your computer. And most of you probably, if you did the homework, experienced using command line on your own to get Python installed. Uh, again, for homework, we had installing Python and Sublime. If you didn't, that's perfectly fine. You can still follow along with what we're doing. But today, we are going to be using the IDE that everyone downloaded, that's Sublime. Again, that stands for Integrated Development Environment. And this is a one-stop shop for everything we were doing last class where we were typing in the command line, the computer was translating Python into a language you could understand, and then it was making the computer do various things. So we're gonna be doing everything in Sublime today. 
And what we'll be doing is we will be working with two popular libraries that you will see throughout your Python career. Those are Network X and Matplotlib. And today we're going to be making a basic network diagram. If for some reason your code doesn't seem to be working for you today, don't worry, at the end of class, I'm gonna send you a working example. So if you get frustrated and something's not working, please feel free to share your error in chat, but also there will be a resource at the end of class to see a working example and figure out what exactly it is on your computer that isn't working. So without further ado, I am going to have everybody open Sublime. So let me get out of my slides. Um, if you have not located Sublime on your computer before, if you're on a Mac, it will be in your applications and you can search for Sublime. If you're on Windows, you can go to your start menu. Its full name is Sublime Text and it has a gray uh, icon with a, an orange S on it. It looks like this. If you will click on Sublime, it will hopefully open to a new blank piece of code. I'm gonna minimize everything else on my screen so that that's all we're looking at. If you were able to load this, can you guys give me a green check? In your reactions. Thank you, seeing green checks and thumbs up. Excellent, okay. Well then, let's start writing our very first piece of Python code. So if you'll remember from last week, when we were writing Python code, it needed to go in a file with the file extension .py. So right now, Sublime is ready to have us write any code we can imagine. We could be writing in JavaScript, we could be writing in Python, we could be writing in C++. It's prepared to understand the language, but only once it knows what we're writing. So the first thing we wanna do is save this as a Python file. So in order to do that, you don't have to write anything in it. You can go ahead to the menu and file, save as. And I want you to pick a folder on your computer somewhere where you'll find it. In this case, my desktop is clean. So I'm gonna save it on my desktop. You can call it anything you want, but it needs to end in .py. So in this case, I'm going to say workshop.py. Again, you can call it anything you want, but it's that .py or .python is what it stands for, file extension that's so important. Once you've named it, if you press save, you'll see that the name appears in your Sublime file and it recognizes it as a Python um, piece of code. Even though we haven't written anything yet, it's now going to do some things such as color the text that we're writing to give us clues and help us write in Python. This is important because if you start new files, it can be tempting the way that you might start to write a paper where you don't save the file right away. If you do that when you're coding, it won't recognize what language it is until you save it. So you'll be coding without as many visual clues as you might like. Okay. Now, the next thing I want everyone to do is we're going to do the same code that we put in the command line last week, but we're gonna do it in this text file. So the first thing we're going to try is saying hello, the way we did last week, which was using the print function. You'll notice when I finish typing the word print, it turns to this pink color. I'll do that again for anyone who's not able to follow along on their computer. As I type print, it turns pink when the computer recognizes that this is a formal function name built into Python. This can be really handy if you're like me and you often make spelling errors. You can catch them really quickly because you'll learn to recognize if print hasn't turned pink, it's not recognized as formal Python code. So in this case, it's print open parentheses, as soon as I start to do that, you'll notice it turns from pink to blue. This is that function recognizing that we're about to enter information. And then when I write hello, it recognizes it in another color as this is text I've included in my file. So again, if you created a new Sublime, 
file and you didn't save it with the Python file extension, you wouldn't be getting these helpful visual clues to make sure that you're writing your code correctly. So once you've typed print hello, I want you to go ahead and save the file. You can either do that with the classic shortcut on your computer, probably command or control S depending on if you're Mac or Windows, or you can simply go up to file and press save. Once you've done that, you are now able to run your first piece of Python code. In order to do that, you need to go up to tools and build. If you are on a Mac, this is abbreviated where you can say command B as a shortcut on Windows, you all will have to tell me, I think it might be control B, but when you press build, a new window will appear at the bottom and you'll see hello outputted the same way it was when we were using the command line. Now I'm gonna take a moment and zoom in so it's a little bit easier for everyone to see. In the meantime, can you give me a green check if you managed to get this to work? Maybe a red X if not. Someone has confirmed it's control B in Windows. I'm seeing some errors. Can anyone who got an error um, put in chat or unmute to share with everyone what you got. I'm sure if you're seeing a problem, someone else is too. Let's troubleshoot together if we can. Anyone who has an error, if you don't mind sharing it. <laughs> All right, several people are putting in Python not found. And someone's getting an error from the Microsoft store. Okay. And Python is not recognized as a command. Someone is talking about, okay. So a lot of people are experiencing some issues with whether or not Python is recognized. Um, we're gonna try and troubleshoot some of those now. If you are not able to do uh, the troubleshooting that I go over in class, I recommend that, I'm gonna put this link in chat again, you switch to the temporary IDE. Um, that I've provided. Again, this is a temporary workspace that you can use during class. Um, and if we're not able to resolve your error, you can look up your error on the internet after class, and it's highly likely that someone else has had that problem too. So we're going to come back around again to solving some errors. If people who are <laughs> really stuck need to switch to the temporary IDE, um, that's another solution. Okay, so I'm just going to move on to the next step. Uh, for folks who are hung up, we're going to cover some error troubleshooting in a minute, but also you can switch to that temporary IDE. So if you've gotten print hello to work, the next step is last time we added on our names. And the way we did that was by defining a variable. In this case, I've given it the name my name. Here, capitalization is up to you, but it's a common coding practice to use what we call camel case which is basically it's a, a joke about like the humps on a camel's back. And every time you start a new word, for example, going from my to name, you capitalize the new word so that you can sort of tell the difference. So what I've done is define a variable name, my name, and I'm setting it equal to the string, which is another word for text, Kate. And then in the next line, I am going to print that out. Again, you'll notice as you're typing these functions print, it's being recognized in blue. If for any reason it's not, you know you probably made a typo. And the way that we combine two strings in this case is using a plus sign. And this time, if you run tools build, you will hopefully see a printout of your full name. If you can give me a green check if that's working for you, that'd be great. And if it's not, and you're getting an error that's different than the errors we were seeing initially, please let me know. I see a couple checks, but not as many. Hopefully, if folks are hung up or you need me to slow down, please don't hesitate to put a reaction in there. Okay, seeing a few more checks, good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is going to help some of the people who ran into errors with their Sublime. And that's, we're going to use this window to check what version of Python might be running on our computers. 
This can be particularly challenging if you're on a Mac. Uh, Python 2 comes pre-installed. So when you installed Python 3 for homework, there may be some cases where your computer is getting confused and it's reading one or another. Um, so what we wanna do is we're gonna load our first library. So Python and other coding languages are in part so powerful because we can take advantage of functions that other people have written. In this case, we load packages of functions called libraries. And the way that we do that is you learn the name of the library. In this case, uh, the name of the library we'll be downloading is sys, which stands for system. And what we do in order to load it is the code import You'll notice when I type the word import, it turns pink. It's being recognized as a formal function name in Python. And then sys. So this says, please import the inbuilt library called sys, which stands for system. And this is going to allow us to print out some information about the version of Python we're using. So the next line there is print sys.version. And what this says is take the library sys and run the sub module or sub function version. You'll notice if you all run that, you should get an output here in your console of a version number. Now there's a lot to unpack here. The first line will probably have a series of numbers. If it starts with a two, you know that your computer is probably a Mac and probably stuck on Python 2. We're gonna go over how to fix that. If it's running three, then you know it was successfully able to find Python 3. And if you get an error, then something has happened where your computer or Sublime is not able to find Python. The last line there where it says Clang is some information about an interpreter that's reading the code back and forth. We don't need that. So I'm gonna address some questions in chat. Someone was asking how to connect to Sublime and run commands. Um, you will either have installed Sublime on your computer since last week, or I'm going to paste into chat again, the temporary workspace you can use during the workshop if you don't have Python and Sublime on your computer. Someone is saying, does build also save modifications in the code? No, that's an excellent question. Um, if you are writing your code back and forth, build will run whatever you have typed, but you still need to save your file. It's a bit like typing in a Word document. You can comment and you can highlight. Things will change on the screen, but if you haven't saved, that work won't uh, continue to be there in the long term. Um, for folks whose Python was getting an error, we're going to attempt to address that here. Again, if you're not able to get it to work during the workshop, I recommend you search for the error afterward. So for people who are getting an error where either they're seeing Python version 2 or they are seeing uh, an error where it's not able to find Python, we're going to go to the command line. If you're seeing version 3, you're good. You all can take a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna pull up the command line, take a moment to zoom in so it's a bit bigger. And what I want you all to do, if you weren't able to get your Python working, is you're going to type which Python 3. This code will tell you what folder on your computer Python 3 was installed on. So when I press enter, I get a folder description here that's it's in a folder user, local, bin, Python 3. If you type which Python 3 and you get an error, it's likely that something happened during the homework where Python was not successfully installed. Someone is saying they see version 2. No, this means that you have Python 2 installed. You need to make sure you have Python 3 installed. I recommend after the workshop referencing the homework where it describes how to make sure you install 3 instead of 2. If, however, you were able to get a folder location for your Python 3 folder, if you will copy this and paste it 
into your code. So again, I ran which Python 3 and I copy pasted that into my Sublime. We are now going to tell the computer to add this folder on so that it can find your Python 3. And the way you do this is using the function sys.path.append. And then this thing you copy pasted from the command line goes into a string. What this does is add on the folder location of your Python 3 so that Sublime is able to find it on your computer. Um, I notice in chat, some people are saying that they're getting errors about which not being recognized. It's possible that you're on a different operating system and your command line requires some slightly different commands. I recommend you use the temporary IDE that I posted in chat earlier and we can get your issue resolved after the workshop. Okay, so hopefully after you run this, you can go to tools and build. Um, most people should now have a successful working version of Python 3. I know it can be extremely frustrating if your is, isn't working. Um, we'll do our best to get it up and running, but this is the hardest part of, about Python is literally getting it installed and working on your computer. So if you are now able to have Python 3 work such that when you run your code and you do that print sys version, you are seeing three or a similar number in your console. Can you give me a green check just so I know how many people are gonna be able to go forward fully with Python 3? Okay, seeing a few checks and thumbs up. Good, again, for everyone who wasn't able to, I recommend the temporary IDE uh, in chat and we can address some of the errors that people are seeing after the workshop in the Teams channel. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is our second library. And this one is going to be matplotlib, which you'll hear a lot about if you're doing Python projects. And the way that we import it is the same way we imported that sys library. We say import matplotlib. And then we're going to import this time a sub function of this. And the code to do that is from matplotlib import pyplot. What this means is Line 10 says import the matplotlib library. So a big package of functions. And then line 11 says from that library, specifically import pyplot, which is a sub function. This means we can now use pyplot the way that we used syspath or sysversion or the way we use print, which is already in built. So now you can use it by saying, matplotlib dot py plot dot plot. And here I'm going to input uh, an array of two sets of coordinates. You'll see what that looks like as I type it. I'm going to give it some coordinates one, two, and three. So these will be the X coordinates and then coordinates four, five, and one. These will be the Y coordinates. They're arbitrary. We're just using some in order to get an example. So this is setting the coordinates for a plot that we're making up right now. And then we only need one more line in order to make it show up. And that is matplotlib. You'll notice as I'm typing this, it's a long word. You might be getting kind of tired of typing it. That Sublime makes a recommendation for oh, you're probably typing the word matplotlib. You can also press tab and your computer will auto complete that as you type. Same goes for as I type pyplot, it's making some recommendations to me. I see pyplot come up. You can press tab to auto complete that. And then I'm gonna use the function show. If you will run this with build, Hopefully you will get a pop-up like this, a fairly unremarkable looking chart, but it is our first chart in Python. I'm gonna move it so that it's not overlapping the code. 
And if you can just give me a green check if that worked for you, red X if it didn't, or some comments in chat if you're seeing errors. I see one check and one X. There are a few people not. Okay, and someone is seeing import matplotlib, matplotlib not found. We will catch up to that. I can tell you in the next phase, I will make sure we come back around to that. Several people not finding matplotlib. Okay. We will take a pause then because a few people are running into this error and we will skip forward in our lesson. Hang on everyone. And we are going to talk about PIP and PYplot. Again, I wanna say thanks everyone for hanging in there, getting the basic materials of Python like Python and Sublime and some of these key libraries running is the most frustrating part of starting out and learning it. I promise if you'll hang in there, we'll get as much as we possibly can resolved today. And then from here on out, it's kind of like riding a bike. You can actually enjoy it once you've finished learning. So we're gonna to talk today about how you install packages. In particular, if you get an error like this, module not found. Uh, there are two pieces of installing packages. The first is something called PIP. That is the preferred installer program for Python. What this means is when you install Python, it comes with a little program within it. It's PIP. I like to think of it as your friend PIP. Um, PIP will help you install packages that are well known in Python. And what it does is PIP is a program that you call and you ask it to install packages from something called PYPI or the Python package index. Um, I've given you some additional information here, as well as a link to pypi.org, which has the list of packages. For the duration of the workshop, we'll be using ones I'm positive are there, um, and you'll hear about, they're very popular. But if you want to do something obscure for a project later on, it's a good idea to check first if PIP already knows about it because it's listed in PYPI. So what we're going to do is go back to our command line. That's how we interact with pip. So let me close this and pull up command line. If you were not able to get um, matplotlib to work, the code that you are going to type is pip install matplotlib. Again, what this is doing is we're calling our friend pip the installer program, we're asking it to install something. And what we're asking it to install is matplotlib. Um, I already have it installed. So unfortunately in this example, I'm, I'm not going to press enter because it might create issues while we're working on the workshop. Um, but if you will run this on your computer, that will hopefully resolve the matplotlib issue for many of you, for everyone in the workshop, I recommend trying a different command, which is pip3. This makes sure that we're running the Python 3 version of pip. You can try pip or pip3, but I recommend pip3 to make sure, especially if you're on a Mac and you have Python 2 and Python 3, that you're grabbing the Python 3 version. We're going to do pip3 list. And if you press enter on this, it's going to show you various packages that are set up on your computer. And in this moment, it looks like it does not want to run the full version. Let me try regular pip list. <laughs> We're getting a syntax error. Hang on everyone, there's an alternative we can use. This happens sometimes, Mac will also update the command line. The important thing to do is not to get too flustered with your command line. So hang on, going to pause for a moment and pull up the alternative code. Thank you for bearing with me. It'll only be a minute. If you all are still seeing errors and installing matplotlib um, did not resolve them, 
uh, please let us know in the Teams channel after class, and we will try and figure out what exactly is wrong. I'm going to pull up the alternative code. All right. So another thing that we can try if pip list isn't working for you again, plagued by technical errors today, we're going to try Python 3 dash M pip list. This is just a different way of phrasing that same code, but instead of asking pip to be called through the command line, we're calling up Python 3 first, then we're saying give us dash M, that's the module name, pip, and we're asking pip again, can it give us list? In this case, it's working. I will scroll back up so that everyone can see that. Um, Pip was not willing to work today through the command line. So what we did instead was call pip through Python 3 using Python 3-m pip list. This will give you a list of packages installed. So importantly here, you should be able to scroll down and locate matplotlib somewhere in there. If you all can give me a green check if you got that to work, a red X, if not, I'll also check the chat. I know we had some errors in command line. Um, this is a pretty accurate representation of what it's like to use Python or the command line on your own computer. Sometimes something as small as an update on your computer can change the interaction. The important thing to do is not to worry. If something worked two weeks ago, but it's not working right now, take a moment, Google the issue, and see if someone has a different way to approach it. So hopefully installing matplotlib will have resolved the problem for people who weren't able to get um, matplotlib to work in the beginning. We are also going to install network X. So in that case, you would say pip install network X. Again, I'm not going to press enter on my computer because I have it installed and I don't want something weird to happen while we're doing the workshop today. But if you can run pip install network X on your computer and then confirm for yourself using that Python 3 pip list that you have it installed. Um, if you can give me a green check once that's working, that would be great. I'm also seeing someone else says they have a warning about different versions of pip. This is an excellent thing to bring up. Um, this can happen if you have different versions of Python on your computer uh, and it's running the old pip that came with Python 2 versus the new pip. Um, I recommend checking this after the workshop. If you get a warning as opposed to an error in the command line, it's a cautionary tale. It won't prevent you from moving forward with the commands you'd like to do, but it's a caution for later on. So I recommend either upgrading your pip or using pip3 to explicitly get that Python 3 version after class, but it shouldn't be an issue for right now. Someone is getting uh, an access uh, issue with Python. That's one I'd recommend Googling. For some people, it can be a permission issue on your computer. So I'm going to go back to the code right now. I know a lot of people are probably feeling a little frustrated. Maybe your computer isn't quite working. Um, again, if you want to switch to the temporary IDE for today, we can resolve um, the issues you're seeing after class. Okay, so now if you are back here in Sublime, we have our matplotlib hopefully running. Um, the next step we're going to do is use that network X that we installed. But before we do that, we've done several things thus far in our code. Um, I recommend that everyone take a moment to save if you haven't already. It will probably come up with an error like this where Sublime recommends that you purchase it or you press cancel. Um, this is the, the downside of Sublime. It is free to use, but they would like you to purchase it. It's okay to go ahead and press cancel. But once you've saved, when we're working on something complicated like this, 
where we're coding, it's a good idea to leave notes for ourselves. So what we've written so far is pure Python code, but what we can add on top of it are comments. So I want you to go to the top of your file and press enter to create a new line for yourself. If you will use the hash sign, the pound sign, whatever you wanna call it, you'll notice that you'll get a grayed out line. When you use this hash symbol, any text that comes after it is considered a note that you've scrawled on top of your code rather than something that needs to be run. So here, for example, I might leave myself a note that says printing my name to the console. That's just reminding me what was I doing with that code. I might add a comment here that says checking my version of Python. And I might add a comment here that said making a basic fake plot. It can be really important to leave yourself notes like this. Again, they're called comments so that later on you can remember what you did. Another advantage of this is if you start to have a bunch of things building up down here in your console, you can use this command to essentially turn those off. So right now we have three print statements. We're printing the version of Python that's running. We're printing hello, and we're printing hello plus your name. If you add a pound side in front of those, they will be what is called commented out. This means they're turned off. And now if you run your code, it will only run the function that's showing a plot. We can even turn that one off right now by getting that last line and putting a comment in it. Now, if you run your code, nothing will show up. What this helps you do is you can iterate through your code, keep coding, but you don't build up this endless list of outputs. You could also create a new file, but this is the most common coding practice. Again, it's called commenting something out. This will now allow us to start a new section where we're going to make a basic network diagram. And we're going to use that network X library that some people were hopefully able to download. If not, um, you can use the temporary IDE. I'm just gonna really quickly switch to the slides to show you all what a network diagram looks like. Um, this is the type of thing we're building. You may have seen one before. The basic premise is you have nodes. In this case, these are network diagrams of different Shakespeare plays, and they are connected by lines based on relationships. Perhaps if characters were in scenes together, those lines are called edges. And what we will be doing today as an example, as silly as it is, we're going to be using the story of Cinderella so I'm going to be using characters like the fairy godmother, Prince Charming, Cinderella. You do not need to be familiar with the story in order to make the network diagram today, but we're going to be making one where the nodes or the circles are the characters in Cinderella and the edges or lines connecting them are the relationships between them. This is just to get a basic example up and running so that we can play with it later by the end of the workshop um, in week four, you all will have built a custom diagram based on a topic you're interested. You can make a network diagram for your friends and family or a TV show you like to watch. But for today, to make sure everybody has the same errors or challenges, we're going to be using Cinderella. Okay, so in your Sublime file, I'm gonna press enter just so that you all can have uh, some extra space in here and see what I'm doing because I'm very zoomed in. We're going to start the steps to make that basic network diagram. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import the network X library. So again, that's import network X. And what you'll notice is as we've been typing functions so far, each time we've been typing the full name, matplotlib.pyplot, and it can get cumbersome. One thing that you do in Python is you can create something called aliases 
or a nickname for a library that you import. This is very important because when you look at coding examples, people have often chosen nicknames when they've imported libraries, and it can take a moment to orient yourself and recognize what they're doing with their code. For the purposes of this workshop, I will use the most popular common aliases so that you will recognize your code in examples you see online. So what I'm going to do is import network X, but I'm going to add as an X. What this says is import this library, but go ahead and give it an alias or a nickname of an X. Now I can use this library. Oh, it's trying, Sublime's trying to autocomplete for me. If it's trying to autocomplete and it won't let you, you may need to click off. Um, so import network S as the abbreviation NX. Now we can start to use this, but we don't have to type out the full network X every time. The next line is we're going to create a variable where our graph is going to be stored. We're just going to abbreviate it G. Again, this is because it's the most common practice for using Network X. So this will look the most similar to examples you see online. You could name it anything you want and it would be perfectly valid. But the examples you'll see online, people set their graph equal to the variable G. So we're gonna say G is equal to that Network X library, but we only have to type NX graph. And you'll notice when you successfully type graph, it turns blue. It's being recognized as a formal function. This is a really good sign. And then I promise you there are only three more lines before we have a working network diagram. So that's the first line you need. The next one is we need to add those nodes or the circle points of our diagram. In this case, it's the characters of Cinderella. The way we do that, is we take our G object where that graph has been stored and we use on it the function add underscore nodes underscore from. And you'll notice as soon as you successfully type that, it's turning blue, it's being recognized as a formal function. This is a good sign. What we give it is a list of characters in this case. We put that list inside square brackets and we'll say Cinderella, use a comma to separate it. And in this case, Prince Charming. We're just going to start with two characters right now, keep it simple just to have a working example. So this adds the circles or the points in our diagram. The next thing we want to add are the lines or relationships between characters. So that is G dot add edges from. So very similar to the language used in the previous um, function. And here the syntax is just slightly different. Um, here we're adding pairs. So we have a list that's square brackets, but inside we have a pair that's in rounded brackets and it'll look like this. Cinderella. Again, you can autocomplete with tab if you want or type it out if you feel more comfortable. And Prince Charming. Someone in chat is adding G is the name given by us for our graph, right? Correct. We are specifying that G is the name of our graph. It could be anything we want it to be. Um, but in this case, we're using G because that's what most people use online and your examples will look most similar. So we've added our nodes, we've added our edges, and the last thing we need to do is actually formally draw the chart. To do that, we use another network X function. So we do nx dot draw. What do we have it draw? G, which is our graph. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn on an option with underscore labels equals true. And you'll notice when I type that property, again, it's recognized as something formal. It turns orange and purple. Um, so these are the lines where we said, network X, please build us a graph, save it in the variable G. 
we'll add these nodes or our characters, and then we'll add this single relationship for now between Cinderella and Prince Charming. We then ask that network X, abbreviated as NX, draw this graph and do it with labels equals true. Um, for whatever reason, the network graph uh, default is not to have labels. That's usually because when people are doing network diagrams, it's an incredibly convoluted, um, very dense visualization. And so it can be advantageous to leave those off in the beginning. The last line we need is uh, calling matplotlib, but in order to make this look again, like the examples you all will see online, I want you to import matplotlib, but this time give it an alias, and we're going to give it the alias plt. So what most people do when they import matplotlib, it's a massive library, and they usually only want to use a subsection of it. So it is incredibly common practice to see matplotlib dot, and this is pyplot, is a sub library within it. And then you bring it in as the alias plt. This might look a little bit confusing for now, but this is the most common way you will see it used uh, online in examples. And that allows you to say plt.show. And now if you build, you will hopefully get this network diagram. <laughs> now, right now, if yours made an error like mine, we are currently plotting both our network diagram and our fake chart on top of one another. This is where that commenting comes in handy. You can see these lines are repeating code we had later on. One trick for getting blocks of code commented out is on a Mac command slash or on a PC, it should be control slash. We'll comment out multiple lines at once. This allows you to turn them on or off by using that uh, shortcut. You can also though manually add that hash sign in front of them and turn them off. That way, when you build, you'll see just Cinderella and Prince Charming. So I know this has been a lot to cover. I'm just gonna check in with people in chat. Can you give me a green check if you were able to get this to work? Um, in chat, I'm seeing some folks uh, are still having errors with installing matplotlib. I recommend uh, Googling your precise error after class. Um, it's likely that there is a blog post about it. I will also stay around to see if I can get people's errors resolved. I see a few green checks. Someone else is saying, even if we don't import matplotlib, it gives the same output how. So most people should have matplotlib installed by default. That's how popular it is with Python. Um, if you were successfully able to download Python 3, the latest version, it's usually included and often already turned on. Um, but it can also be possible that somewhere earlier in code, uh, higher in your file, you haven't commented out the import um, I see several people putting in uh, error codes that they have. I may not be able to debug that full thing, but let's talk about, um, someone asked how to put the hash mark on lines. Again, you can either type that manually or on um, your keyboard, there should be a shortcut where if you select several lines of code and either press command slash or I believe it's control slash if you're on a PC, that comments and uncomments it, which is sort of like turning it off and on. Okay, and someone else is getting an error about importing network X. Um, we can come back around to that. It probably means network X wasn't installed correctly and we can revisit that. Um, I know we only have uh, a few more minutes in the workshop, so I just wanna wrap up 
uh, for folks who were able to get most things working. Um, let's talk about the last few steps you would take. Right now, we only have uh, Cinderella and Prince Charming. In an ideal world, we would like to have all of the characters. And so what we can do is create new variables that hold all of the characters and all of the relationships. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of nodes. I can give it any name I want, but I'm going to call it node list because I'll remember what that means later on. In this one, I'm going to include all of my characters. Uh, I will send you all a list later, so we don't need to type them all out right now, but I'm going to have Cinderella and Prince Charming, and I'm going to add the fairy godmother for now. And I'm also going to create an edge list and set that equal here where we have pairs. So that's Cinderella and Prince Charming. That's, sorry y'all, Cinderella and the fairy godmother. And again, I will send you all after class longer versions of this, but for right now, I've defined a node list with Cinderella, Prince Charming, and the fairy godmother, and an edge list with Cinderella and Prince Charming, and a pair of Cinderella and fairy godmother. And now I can take where I had add nodes from, and instead of entering it manually, I can have my node list. And instead of entering the edges manually, I can have my edge list. And now when I build, I'll get, <laughs> I, you'll notice I made the mistake of uncommenting my chart above. I need to make sure I comment it back out in the future. But here I'm getting Cinderella and the fairy godmother and Cinderella and Prince Charming. Um, it's likely that I've misspelled something, um, and that's why we're seeing multiple nodes here. But this is the basic setup for the chart. Um, I am going to pull up a different version of the code again, just to finish out the workshop. Um, a complete version. Okay. It is. Hang on opening the wrong file. Here we are. This is a complete version of the code that I will share with you all after class. The only difference is that I have added quite a few more relationships between characters. So for now, I'm going to comment out what I had above here and just build this version. I'll zoom out so that you all can see. This is the complete code. And if I run build, I will get this network diagram. You'll see Cinderella is in the middle. We've got her connected to the fairy godmother, Prince Charming, that's her evil stepmother. It's a fairly basic chart, but if you can get this working, it'll show you have network X installed, matplotlib installed, that you're able to define some variables as well as a few other things. So I'm gonna pause at this point talk about uh, the homework. Uh, for homework, it is simply to catch up to where we are. If you weren't able to install Network X successfully, um, I recommend revisiting that. Again, I'll stay after class for a bit. I also recommend Googling your error. Um, if you weren't able to make the diagram following along today, um, catch up with that. I have a link here to a temporary IDE that has fully working code. If nothing else, um, if you're very tired and you don't have a lot of time, you can copy paste from that uh, into your computer, into your Sublime, and it should be fully working. I will also post the working code file that I have from Teams. So on that note, the slides will be in Teams. They have some helpful links. But the most important thing would be to get you all into the Teams channel. So I'm going to paste this link in chat. This will allow you to join the Teams channel where folks can compare errors outside of the workshop. 
I can try and help people resolve their issues. And we'll also share things like the slides and the recordings. I know that this was a lot to cover today and more people had errors than we were expecting. This happens sometimes. Um, there's been recent updates to Python, recent updates to people's operating systems. Again, I know this can be frustrating. This is seriously the hardest part about Python is getting it connected. Um, so I'm happy to answer as many questions as possible. Um, folks can sort of leave now if you're done, but I'll try and get as many people working and up and going with Python and Sublime as possible. Next week, we'll be connecting to a CSV file, which means you can bring your own data sets um, and it'll really start to get more dynamic and fun. You can be customizing maybe your favorite TV show or one of your friends and how various friend groups know each other. Um, so we'll get into more advanced work next week. So thank you everyone for attending. Again, I will stay after to answer as many questions as possible. Um, I'm going to stop the recording because folks don't, don't need to see all of this question answering. All right.